Welcome, everybody. Can I make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes of <clears throat> August 10th, please? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes from our meeting in August 10th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Under tonight's all business, JBC Architect LLC for variance to construct a three story rare edition, third floor edition, the existing two, two story single family home, convert the single family home into a three family home on the premise 38 Home Street. Is the applicant their representative here? Yes. You have the floor, Barney. I'm not showing us. I, um, I revised the plan, so I did a little research. Yep. Do I, first of all, do I need to sworn in? Yes. Okay. You swear to tell the truth, <clears throat> the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. Thanks. So um, I revised the plan based on, you know, I made the uh, FAR to meet the zoning requirement, okay. open space, and I spoke to Jay. So our parking work, our parking sp number of parking spaces work too. So we made three of the variances to meet. Right. So, so we're seeking for um, setback. So you have six now, correct? I'm sorry, six parking space. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we we moved the addition uh, first floor and have the parking open on the ground floor. Yep. And keeping three story, three family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there uh, any questions of the board, Mr. Capas? No questions. Uh, Mr. O'Brien? Uh, just that they checked the turning radius. That was one of our concerns. That works? Uh, turning radius, I widened it on the, on the new addition is no problem, but on the existing building, we cut out this corner too. So to they make can, it flow uh, better. See the angle okay. on the building they cut out? Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Chen? No questions. Mr. Hemmel? No questions, as long as you got those six parking spaces and the turning radius works. Right. Let's see if it, we want to speak to any anyone else with the new changes. Uh, anyone who wants to speak in favor? First call, star, star nine, or uh, a hand wave. There should be, if you're on a laptop, a reactions button for the virtual hand raise. If you're calling in on a phone, it would be star nine, or just uh, turn on your screen, give us a wave, or send the host a chat. Thank you. Thank you, John. Second call. Is there anyone that wants to speak? No hands. Third call. Call up out of the hearing closed. No new correspondence. Uh, is uh, there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? Anyone? First call. Second call. No hands. Third call closed. I'll be voting in favor since they did everything that was looked at. Mr. Cabez? Mm. Voting in favor also. Mr. O'Brien? Uh, likewise. Mr. Chin? I'm in favor. Mr. Hemmel? In favor. Could I have a motion, please, Ms. Cabez? Chairman, yeah, the matter number 21 34, JCBT Architects LLC, who are very to construct a three story rear addition. A third floor addition to the existing two story single family home and convert from a single family home to a three family home on the premises numbered 38 Home Street. I make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion, seeing none, Madam Clerk, can we have a voice vote? Madam Clerk, can I have a voice vote, please? Mike Colvis? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Charlie O'Brien? Uh, yes. John Himmel? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Marty Akins? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Further on to tonight's business, GBA 
2142. UNU, I, I apologize for a special permit floodplain variance finding to construct a one story addition in, in a roof deck in the premise number 70. Carlisle is an applicant and a representative here. You can, go ahead and unmute. you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you're here. Hello? Where are we? Is there an applicant here? We'll call that back later. We're doing the tonight's business. Lane Goldberg for variance to construct a single family home in a vacant lot in the premise number zero. Gertrude is the applicant and representative here. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Lane Goldberg. Are you an attorney? Yes, I'm an attorney. Okay. Uh, you have the floor. Why don't you tell us what you did with any changes or no changes? How'd you make out with the neighbors? Yeah, so uh, last we were here about two weeks ago. Um, and there were a couple things that the board had suggested. We made the change to take off the deck in the back. Mm -hmm. um, the plans were submitted to the ZBA online and then delivered to the ZBA as well. So each of you should have a copy of those new architectural plans and I can share those on the screen if you'd like. Yes, um, please. What we, what we did was um, we took why off you, the- Why don't you talk when you put it on the screen so everyone can see what the changes okay. are. Great. Jonathan, if you could let him in. He's all set. Yep, all right. I think it's letting me. All right, so up on the screen right now is the, um, this is the new site plan. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit. You can see on the back, I'm sorry, this is the wrong. Excuse me, Lane, that's the old side plan, the, yeah. the new side plan at the end of the joint. So let me get you the new one. It's right here. So uh, on the on the back, there is no longer a deck. There's just a balcony that's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see this on the architectural plans as well. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see that. So... Uh, you know that was at the you know the direction of the the board wanted to see that there was also some other um one other issue that on the front of the house the windows uh right here mm -hmm. they did not look the same as the windows on the left side of the house so we uh designed those to look symmetrical with the other windows right. um the other task that the board wanted us to do was to speak with the attorney for the neighbors um, I did speak with the attorney for the neighbors, and I think that we're, um, you know, I, I would say that we're at the point of, you know, they don't want to see anything there. Yep. And we want to build something there. So uh, there's not going to be any settlement with them. Um, they, you know, they didn't suggest any changes to the, you know, what they wanted was really basically nothing um, to be okay. built there. So we're not going to do that. Okay. Any questions from the board? I see you did everything that the board asked you. Uh, and say, Mr. Caveas, any questions? I have, I have no questions. Uh, Mr. O'Brien? The only the only thing we need to do here is just a front setback. Is that correct? Everything else is, is, is there? That's correct, yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chin? I'm all set. I, I, um, I'm happy with the uh, revisions. Mr. Hamill. Yeah, the front looks much better, much more symmetrical, great looking. Thank you. Is there anyone that wants to speak in favor with the changes? First call, second call, <clears throat> third call close, no new correspondence. Anyone opposed or undecided? The chairman, uh, Frederick Hassman on behalf of the abutters. Yep. Fred, you have the floor. All right, thank you. Again, for the abutters, Christine uh, Fowl, uh, Robin Anderson, Christopher Anderson, um, of 10 Gertrude, 8 Gertrude, and 4 Gertrude. Yep. Um, again, as Council said, we, we did speak. We weren't able to reach any sort of compromise. 
uh, and, and I won't rehash. I, there was, I know that my um, partner was here at the last meeting, and he, and he went over the arguments, and we submitted a rich, uh, written argument as well. Right. Um, and just one thing, my client did ask, they, they, they sent in their own submission today. It was a PDF PowerPoint yep. document. Was that yep. received? Okay. Yes. Thank you. I, they just wanted me to confirm that you didn't get that. Yep, we did get that. It was okay. all sent out. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So, again, I won't, I won't belabor the argument that was written, but, you know, the applicants are relying on a topography soil condition argument as grounds for the variance, mm -hmm. um, which is the, the, the first prerequisite for a variance. And right. um, there's... There's just nothing on the record to show how the soil and topography of this property uh, are unique from the other land within this district, which is the prerequisite under 40A. I mean, there's nothing unique about this property's topography and soil compared to the neighboring lots. Uh, it's the whole neighborhood has sort of these wetland and marshes in the rear. They slope back towards them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's nothing, again, nothing unique and I'd suggest that would satisfy the requirement, the first prerequisite um, uh, to grant the variance. Um, you know, further, regarding the variance, is it derogating from the purpose of the bylaw? This, the property was purchased after the bylaw change, or at least this applicant application was filed. There's, there's no, no building on there. And, you know, the city of Quincy set these standards for frontage and side setbacks and I, I understand this is just for a front setback but right. you know the purpose of these based on the bylaws to secure and i'm paraphrasing a little from safety from fire provide adequate light prevent overcrowding encourage open space mm -hmm. you know and by placing this um structure you know 11 feet from the road and, and probably in already a somewhat crowded neighborhood, you're, in my opinion, you're derogating from the purpose of that bylaw of the open space and, and safety uh, by granting a variance uh, in this instance. So, uh, again, the, the neighbors, and you heard from some of them yep. in the last hearing, are, are, are just in the abutters, along yep. with some other neighbors, are, are, are against this. Right. Um, application and, and we'd request that the board deny the, um, the request for a variance. Thank you, counsel. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else opposed or undecided? First call, second call. Put your hand up. Uh, one yeah. thing I want Marty, to say, hold Marty, up. I think you have one person here. Yeah, Kathy, hold up one second. Uh, is there anything yeah. here from the counselor? He told me, he left me a message saying he's sending something in. Gonna send in a letter. Just, I he just told want, me he said he was gonna send Yeah, it. he told me he was gonna send in a letter. I just wanna make sure if we got it before. If not, we'll put it in the record. I don't know. I don't see it yet. Uh, Kathy? Uh, John, uh, John Walsh. John, you wanna take an oath, please? Sure, absolutely. You swear to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you guys? I do. Thank you. I do. Go ahead, John. Hey, uh, John Walsh, 15 Gertrude Ave, one of the abutters. Um, yeah. I guess I'm opposed uh, to this particular structure on a different reason. Looking at the the slope of the land, the erosion over the years, and the potential damage to some of the large trees holding up the slope, uh, I just think over time it's going to be detrimental to that that whole embankment. Um, so that's I just wanted to voice my opinion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Walsh. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Second call. Third call. Call that part of hearing closed. We we can't find the letter that uh, he just sent me a text saying he was going to send in something this morning, but I haven't seen it. So there's no letter from him. He might have sent it to Noreen. He might have sent it to Noreen, and I, and, and like I said, our clerk is is out. If there is one there, I'll put it on the record. And make sure uh, if anyone wants it, it would be in the record. Uh you know, I, I, here's the way I look at this. I look at this as there's 22,000 square feet of land there, and the guy's looking for a front variance. And if you give him the front variance that's in line with the rest of the houses, that house fits. He even took off his beautiful deck up, going, going back. So there will be no erosion in the back and worrying about that embankment being erosion, 
upon father neighbors. So with those in mind, I'm going to be voting yes. Mr. Cabayas, comments? Well, I, you know, it, it's funny because it pointed out to me that uh, back in 2012, I guess, I was the only one in favor of putting something there. Um, but I guess I still am, so uh, I'll be voting in favor. Uh, Mr. O'Brien? Uh, the same with me. If it was anything beyond the, um, the setback in the front, mm -hmm. and it looks like the Conservation Commission uh, made some plantings requirements for the slope, mm -hmm. so I would, ex I would expect that the erosion back there should be minimal. I don't know. I'm not an uh, environmental person or a shoreline person, but I think the precautions have been taken to save it. So I'll be voting in favor. Okay, Mr. Chin? I'm in favor. And where's Mr. Himmel? Mr. Himmel? I'll be in favor. I agree with him, Marty. It's a 22,000 square foot lot. There's way sufficient open space in the rear. Conservation Committee put a lot of work into uh, conserving that slope. So I'll be voting in favor. I have a motion, Mr. Cabez? Yes, Mr. Chairman, amendment number 21 dash. 46, uh, Lane Goldberg for a variance to um, so zero Gertrude Avenue. I make a motion to uh, grant the variance. I don't have exactly in front of me what he requested because it's not on my agenda. Front, but set, front, front, front yard setback. Front, um, yes, right. Front yard setback. Grant the variance on the front yard. Seconded. Setback. Second. Madam Clerk, can we have a voice vote? Mike Cavayas. Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Marty Akins? Yes. Okay, further on to tonight's business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And new business ZBA 2153, Heidi Mann Design Group for Variance Find and Construct a one half story building. The existing non conforming lot received variances in case number Z1940 for a one and a half story building on premises 186 Essex Street in Quincy. Is the applicant or the representative here? Uh, right here. You're Hello. Not, are you, you're not an attorney, are you, Chief? Uh, no, I'm not. Could, could you swear, man, please? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, I help you, God? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. Let, before I give you the floor, here, here, here's my two cents on this. Since since COVID came in, you still have that valid one and a half story building that you could build, ten feet in each side. Correct. Yes. All right. So I think the board. I was the only one that voted no on that, but the board thought about it, and 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 what they decided was let's make it a smaller house. You're subdividing a lot, which the neighbors did not want. Let's give them a one and a half story house because it is all rock and ledge back there, correct? Uh, some outcrops, we see. Yeah. All right. So, and they're worried about the flooding and everything else down there. So, so they did that for you. But you come back here now after getting that from the board and still could get a valid permit and you want to build a two and a half story house. I think it's really an insult. It's an insult to this board. What they've done and to turn around and then want to make it a two and a half story house with the problems that were down there and the board even voted against the neighborhood fire. Maybe maybe you could explain to me what happened and why we are where we are today. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Can I uh, share the screen please? Sure. Any comments on those comments? Or are you just going to show us your plans? Uh, well, actually, we make the footprints smaller and more setback on the rear. So I think it's a compromise to. Um, All, right. All right, show it up. So. Um, I'm just going to skip some of this front end. This is the old history um, of, of the properties and the board well aware of the situation. This is the site plan that was approved. Um, back in 2019 and um, the building. So I'm going to jump right to the proposed plan. So what we are showing here is 
Um, I can show you what the, the, the red dotted line is more like the overlay of the approved site plan back in um, 2019. Yes, what the, what the owner, the current owner proposing to do is reduce that footprint, push the building up. So um, in exchange to that, he's looking for a, a two and a half story building up higher in the front and more setback to the to the rear the rear setback is it was approved at 20 uh on the on the old side plan with 27.4 now the new the new proposed side plan we have 39 foot setback which, which is at a uh almost 12 feet difference it's mm -hmm. more open the site will have more open space there's a 10, 10 by 10. Four, isn't that a four foot difference uh, I'm sorry, it's a four foot difference. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm just re reading the wrong notes. I'm sorry. So it's, it's more, um, no, it's. All right, go ahead. No, it's, it's, it's 12 foot difference. It's we deals from. It was 27, right? 27 to 39. Oh, 39. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So we tried to open up more open space in the rear. And, um, you know, it's greater distance to, to the rear neighbor. And we're doing all the requirement that the, uh, the last revised, uh, I mean, the, the uh, approval. Um, so the site is going to be 25% more open space on the site. And we do um, realize that there was a drainage concern. So we are still capturing all the roof runoff and putting into an underground system. And there is an existing 10 by 10 concrete slab on the site. We are going to remove that. And so that's going to be further reduce the uh, runoff. And the building is uh, because of potential latch on the site. So it's going to be no basement um, neither. The building is going to be a modular construction. So basically we build a foundation and it's going to be box come in and uh, assembly the building. So it's very quick constructions. Yeah, the building will be done within a few months. So I think the, the time of the construction is going to help to mitigate some of the, the construction impact concern of the neighbor. And, you know, let me just use the, the height of the, What's the height of your house there, the new one? The height of the house is it's 33.7. And you so know you have a one and a half story on the left, and you got a one and a half story on the right of that house. And in the back of it, it is the way that the topography goes, it's like a one story in the back. So this enormous building is going to be standing in the middle of those three. That's why I think we talked about the one and a half story to make it fit with the neighborhood. You're up another three, three and a half, four feet on your neighbor on the left on that lot. And he's got a one and a half story. At a one and a half story, you're probably still going to be 10 feet above him. So on the screen here, we also did a 3D model overlay of the, uh, the bird eye view of the uh, properties. And as you can see, we realize the rear building is a one-story building, mm -hmm. but the, the height of the building is the, the gray of the building of the rear lot is five foot higher than the um, access street. So it's not going to be a full story difference on the on the on the height. Of course it is. It's lower you're lower in the back and it's only a one story building, and it's lower. Well, it is going to be higher. I'm not saying it's it's not going to be a full story. All right. I'm just saying, All right. and just to finish the um, presentation, this is the kind of sample of the building, how it looks like it's not exactly the same. Uh, we have hardy prank um, uh, on the exterior, black trim windows, uh, met, uh, metal roof in front of the garage. It's going to be a white picket fence all around the um, um, property, around. 
as I was just explaining, the the great difference is about five feet between the um, the rib of the building and the front of the building. So it's going to be a five foot difference in between. You can see this is more like a section between the two two buildings. And at the last, also I want to uh, I emailed this to Noreen. I'm not sure if the board received this. We also get a um, uh, letter of support from uh, a lot of the neighbors as well. Um, all the green address shown on the map here, you've got 13 of them signed the um, letter of support and uh, out, of this, out of the map, uh, we have added six, so we have 19 all, to, all, together, all together letter of support of this project. Um, and these are just the letter. I'm not going to go through all of them. And I understand the the uh, abutters submit a uh, package to the zoning board today by email. Um, well, I just I just want to um, again. I just want to point out that the solar study is is a little skewed. I'm not saying it's wrong. But it's a little skew. It's not. It's not showing the great difference between the two properties. Mm -hmm. And the rare property is five foot high. If you see the the shadow study, um, the red line is pretty much the the existing grade of the rare properties. And that is only on September twenty first, uh, four to five p.m. The majority of the time is not going to be in the shadow on, on that properties. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's basically sum up the presentations and want to open the board for any questions. Now, you have three dharmas on the front of this two and a half story. You know, I feel offensive, I really do, that the board gave you something for that property and you come back. I don't have any questions because I'm dead set against it and I think the neighborhood should all be against it, to tell you the truth. You, had a, you have a thing, you have a permit for one and a half. Just so you know where my vote's going to be in this, that I'm definitely going to say no, and I'm going to say go build what you can build by rights because of, of, of this whole thing. You came, you, you, you asked for something, you got it, and now you come right back before it's even built or anything and want to change it all to a two-and-a-half-story building because money's involved. That's what this is about, money, plain and simple. So. Well I have no question. I have no questions. I'm just giving you my comments now to make it quick and easy the way I feel. I voted no against the first project that probably shouldn't have been okay. built yet. Can I just, uh, looking can back, I, at that, you're can done. I just say I thought one you were thing? done. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean the this property was changed hands last year and um, my client is building it for himself. You know, his that this is going to be his retired home. He lives in Quincy right now. He just wants to um, he live in Victory Road. He just wants to move here. So it's not right. it's not going to be building for profit. He's building it for his own. He talked to all the neighbors. Um, so just wanted to point that out. No, I know that. But but he ain't going to live there for 100 years. But that house is going to be there for 200 years. So or 100 anyway. Anyway, Mr. Gabayas, any questions? I have none, uh, Mr. Chairman. I um, also... Uh, I, I think you're pretty much summing up my feelings about this whole thing. Not to uh, start, you know, uh, I'm supposed to be asking questions, but I'm not like, so yeah. I, I don't have any questions. No, I know. I just think you made a deal with that person for a property so she could build a small house, and it was supposed to be for someone in her family, by the way, and then she sells it. So who knows? Who knows? Right. Who does know? Uh, Ms. O'Brien? Hi. Yeah, no comments at this time. I'll comment okay. when we close and vote. Sure. Mr. Chin. I do not have any comments at this time. Uh, Mr. Hemmel. Well, I thought it was an accommodation last time at one and a half stories, so that kind of lets you know where I stand. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. If we could clear the screen. Is there anyone that wants to speak in favor? Any person you wants to speak in favor? Oh, yeah. Lynch? No, 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 no. He, he, we're very opposed. Oh, I will get to anyone that's opposed. 
Uh, anyone want to speak in favor for this project? First call. Second call. Um, before I call third call, you said a supplemental list was given to us. I will put it in the record. Uh, I don't have it here right now, but maybe the clerk, maybe it went to her. Uh, and if you sent it today, then maybe we didn't get it, but it'll get yeah, in the record. Yeah, I understand she's on vacation. Right, right. Thank you. Uh, any new correspondence? No new correspondence? Oh. We did not. Yeah, the first one. Thanks. Uh, have a letter here August 9th. We have the UC reference project and have no comments again. So, uh, uh, is there anyone opposed or undecided? Could the links please take a uh, an oath, please? <clears throat> you all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you guys. I do. We do. Thank you. You're up. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, I'm Sally Lynch, 180 Essex Street, the property immediately next door. Yep. Sally Lynch. Okay. It's you the have the same floor. property. You have the floor. I obviously, obviously um, um, we're feeling exactly the same way Mr. Akins is, has. Um, we spoke in opposition to anything being built there since way back, what was it, 13, 14 years ago, um, when the property was originally um, up for being divided. Um, I make a difference, but in pushing it back, you're actually going to be going higher on the peaks of the land. So you have a 33.7 foot house on top of what makes um, by, by pushing it back. One moment, us one moment, time out. As the height out. of Lynch. the house. Ms. Lynch, hold on. We're getting a lot of feedback. Can you get a little closer to your computer maybe and try that? Not, not right. Yeah, I just, it's, it's, Something's happening. Marty, I'm, I'm not sure it's so much as feedback. It is their connection. Uh, oh. I just put I just put them on mute to see maybe if they could they could fix it a little bit. They can go ahead and unmute themselves. All right. I, is that that we are in Swanum and we do get terrible energy. energy here, so I apologize. We have, no, no, no. Uh, We're just trying to figure out what's going on because it's going. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. You're up. Try that. Well, 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 well. <laughs> is that, that close-up and personal? Right, so the fact that the house is 33.7 feet is going to put it higher on the land as the land is already, the topography, as Mr. Aikens referred to, is already much higher than either 93 or our property. So it's going to raise it up even more. So the open space isn't the issue with us. It's the size of the house and the fact that the drainage is just going to be worse. Everything we fought against for a 0.5 story house is going to be compounded. And there's just no need for it. Uh, we, just, we just can't see any of support. You won't see anybody that abuts this property having improved of it. They are all people who are slightly removed from what will, what will be 186. We're resigned to the fact that a house is going to go there because we know that was approved, um, but there's no need for it to be a 2.5. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lynch, you want to say something? I just have a couple of things to add. First of all, as far as the sunlight goes, it's from our property line. Mm -hmm. The house during the midday is the sun is going to be low on the southern edge, and that doubt's going to block in instead of coming. Uh, sky, sky view. I mean, it's, we wouldn't, it's going to be hard to see the sky from stand beside the house with that property. Another I really thing, I don't know if it's really relevant. I think the east, sun, the east sun, as it's coming around to the southwest when it's coming, I don't know when you're going to, yeah, you're going to be blacked out. 
we are going to be blocked as as well 93 right the other issue i have is it, whether or not it's relevant i'm not sure but if this is a single family owner that wants to build this house mm -hmm. and i'm just not sure what the future holds for that house as far as what could be who could be who could be in that house why one person would not probably want to put a house that's basically all that thank you is there anyone else that would like to speak Opposed or undecided? You have uh, Citizen Rotefeld and Kathy Brink, and I believe this, Hannah this Cassidy as well. Go ahead, John. John? You got me. You're up. John Rotefeld, 62 Grand Wall Road. I swear to tell the truth. Thank uh, you. Basically, um, I just wanted to point out that let's just say if you grant this variance for them to build two and a half stories, nothing's going to prevent them from coming back to build another big addition on the back of this house. So um, the house looks way too big and out of place and definitely overshadowing the neighbors. I mean, I, I couldn't tell from the picture, but what are the side setbacks? Are they asking for a variance on the left and on the right? Yep. 10. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's what, when you look at the zoning code, if you look at the, you know, the business C, which doesn't make any sense. John, John, we're in a residence A. Let's just stick. No, no, but I'm just saying part of the part of the reason why there are setbacks is because of the shadows. Right. And so if you want to go, if you want to go closer to the border, you can't go higher. You can't do <laughs> both. I mean, that's like, that's like saying that's totally against the zoning variances. So if you are going to grant the zoning variances, you can't give relief in both areas. So the relief you gave before, you probably shouldn't have even given that relief, according to what you're saying right now. So bottom line is that, um, you know, they're asking for too much here, and I'm, a, I'm against the ask. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Kathy? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, my client... Uh, asked me that um, he would like to withdraw. He'd like to work with the neighbor. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let me finish. People have things to say tonight. I want to okay. hear. Happy Brink, take an oath, please. Good. She's They're good. They're good. You're good. Um, I won't belabor everything that has already been said. Yep. Um, my husband and I both oppose uh, the building of this house. Mm -hmm. um, I sent materials into the board. I also sent uh, a copy to the owner of the property. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, our, our concern is what has been addressed, which is the air and the light into our property. The lynches are on one side of the house. We're on the back of the house. Yep. During the day, the lynches won't have any light. At, in the afternoon, in the evening, we won't have any light. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Chin says that the uh, that our house at 93 Ashworth is quite high. It's actually a one-story home. Exactly. The fence that's directly behind it that would be between our property and this this property on Essex Street mm -hmm. is between six to seven or eight feet tall. We get varying measurements depending on where you measure it from. Mm -hmm. This house is going to sit roughly 30 feet above that fence. There's no way that our house, which is a one-story house, right. has any chance of getting light when we have that behemoth built behind us. We've been in Squam. We raised our three kids here. We knew about the initial request to have it split. And we knew when we bought 93 that this board had refused to allow those people to do it. So we were very surprised when the butchers came and asked to have it split, that mm -hmm. it was allowed to be put into two undersized lots. But we also were aware of the one and a half story house that the butchers had asked. And when um, many people from the neighborhood came and raised concerns about the building on the slot because of the drainage, um, primarily because of the drainage, right. that zoning request was withdrawn and we had to go through it a second time. Mm -hmm. And the way of handling that drainage was putting something on the roof to catch rainwater. We're not worried about rainwater. We're worried about this underwater drainage that we all have that run from East Guantanamo over or under Ashworth and down to Essex. This is a problem we have after you approve the first variance, we put in an extensive drainage system around our house because we were concerned even with a one and a half story house with them refusing to do anything with drainage other than put something to catch roof water rain 
that we would have some pretty substantial flooding. We also had to worry about the house at 93 Ashworth, what was going to happen to the flooding in that house. So these concerns were all raised at the initial variance, but then it was allowed. But you guys were very specific when you wrote your opinion um, and your memorandum and decision in support of allowing them to build on this property. Very specific that this variance was allowed, but that the building had to be in conformance with the, with the um, home that was submitted with the request for a variance. It was a 1.5 story house. Correct. The neighborhood raised concerns that the reason that they were asking this to build this this house on 186 Essex was not because they were building a house for their mom. She just sold her four million dollar house on Crab I know. Street. I know. And so this was our concern all along. And within one year of getting granted that variance by you guys, yep. 123 Crabtree was on the market. When I went in and asked them at 123, what are you going to do with 186 Essex? I was told we're keeping it so we can build for ourselves. After 123. Crabtree was sold, they then sold 186 Essex. This is the exact concern that we raised when they were granted the first. Right, and they knew when they bought that they had a permit for one and a half story home. Exactly. Right. Um, one of the things you don't see, they're talking about how they're making it into a smaller footprint. The concerns that we have is there's going to be a, back, a deck on uh -huh. the back. You can see in the drawing that there are, are doors that are going to lead out onto the back. So there's obviously plans to put a deck out in the back which will need some sort of foundation. On top of that, and bear with me because I'm not in the building trade, I teach reading to uh, disabled students in the Quincy Public School System. We do have a system. long night, so. Okay, you... I'll, I'll be quick. That's the third story is a livable story. It yep. has a, a full-size bathroom with a closet with 15 feet. It's mm -hmm. a thousand square foot. It's almost bigger than the house at Ashworth. Mm -hmm. um, if it was up to me, we'd ask you not to build at all on 186 Essex, but at the very least, we'd ask you to deny this, this variance and uphold what was your previous ruling of a 1.5 story house in line with what the butchers had asked and not take this off and put this on over and over again like the butchers were able to do. Yep. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else opposed to undecided? Hannah Cassidy. Uh, Hannah Cassidy. Take Hi, thank you. Yeah, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You can see the sunlight coming behind me. I am at live at 93 Ashworth. That's the sun that's going to be blocked by a, and it's not a two and a half story house. It's a three story house. And I don't want to, I'm gonna, not going to belabor the point or anything else like that. But we spend a lot of time in, in our yard and my garden will go away. I mean, there's there's nothing that says that that's, that's a good idea. I also want to raise the fact is that when we've got the scale drawing that you put there to say that this was to scale and the model, that was certainly not to scale. There's there uh, the the the, sun the 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 solar the study that was done is pretty darn accurate on how much um, shade would come over the house on this one. And if it's going to be a retirement home, can I ask a question? Why isn't there a bedroom on the first floor? Because I don't know of a single retirement home that you wouldn't plan for a first floor. Again, there are so many different things that are going on here, but I think that the, the Brinks have raised it, but it's my backyard. It is literally, I have a 20 foot backyard and now suddenly I'm gonna have the green monster in the backyard. And I, I you know, to conform with the, the, the zoning laws that are here, we're a, law, we're a land of laws and rules and let's abide by them. I'll, if there has to be a house there, one and a half stories is fine. A three story house is unacceptable. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak opposed or undecided? This is Richard Walsh. Can you hear me? Richard, yeah. Could you please take an oath, Richard? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Richard Walsh. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Mike? Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, but the, but the truth will help you guys. I do. Thank you. Go ahead, Richard. So I'll be brief. Name be and address brief. for the record, please. Pardon me? Name Richard and Walsh. address for the record. Uh, I'm the owner. No, name and address for the record. Oh, name and address. Richard, Richard Walsh, 186 Essex Street. You got it. So uh, I'm new to the process, number one. Number two, I purchased the property on May 27th. I didn't realize the, the history and everything that all the abutters went through. Mm -hmm. uh, I went around, I met all the neighbors, I listened to their uh, issues. And, and, you know, quite frankly, I, I understand them. Uh, I want to address them. And um, I, I didn't realize this was as big of an issue that it is. Uh, based on that, uh, I, I, I w I'm going to withdraw the, uh, the uh, house as it exists. I'll go back to the one and a half level. Uh, you know, it's very important for me to be a good neighbor. 
uh, I had nothing to do with the pass. Mm -hmm. And um, sorry, I took up your time uh, this far to, uh, on this busy evening. But Richard, you bought a piece of property. You didn't know it already had it had uh, a variance on it. Oh no, no, I knew it had a variance. But my question was: So why was, didn't you read the variance? It would have told you exactly what was there. Uh, no, no, uh, Chairman Avery, I, I, I read the variance, and I knew right. it had a, a permit to build a one and a half level. I was right. just asking if I could do a two and a half level. So yeah. all it was is an ask. But I didn't understand. I didn't know but, the history. But you of know what? And then I look at the front of it, just not to say nothing, Richie, but you have three dormers on the front of your house. I mean, it's a three. It's almost three stories. You know what I mean? Okay. I, I withdrew my, I, I'm withdrawing the. Uh, well, the maybe you're not. Is. Maybe you're not. Maybe, maybe the board has to vote on this. That's a request by you. That don't mean it's approved automatically. The board will talk about that. We'll keep that under consideration. Thank you for your time. Thank Further you. on to tonight. Is there anyone else? Suppose run aside. We have Will Castle. Well, is it the same house, Will? Wait a minute, Will. Uh, you got to unmute yourself, Will. Uh, is this the same house, Will? You got to unmute yourself, first of all. Unmute. Is this the same house? Yes. That was just speaking? Yes. All right, we got to wait because Kathy wanted to. Again, second, but I wouldn't let until everyone spoke once. Anyone else here want to speak? Second call. All right, Kathy, your husband's up, I guess. Yeah, very quick. Um, as you can see out the back, I have light coming in the backyard in, in my office. Yep. I'm, I'm going to lose that when they put that monstrosity there. So yep. we're, we're opposed to it, period. Thank you. Mr. Cassidy, you're up. Actually, I'm, I'm Mr. Brink, but it's... <laughs> Mr. Uh, Brink, you swear to tell the truth. <laughs> I, I, I do swear to tell okay. the truth. I, I'm going to be very brief. I just want the board to know the water problem. I'm sure that everybody talks about water. Look at the materials that we submitted. Yep. We, we um, as the owners of, of 101 Crabtree and 93 Ashworth, we combined with our the prior owner, spent over $40,000 trying to get our basements dry. Right. Uh, you know, he's going to put a, the giant foundation back there. It's going to be like a plug and it's going to be it's going to create a problem. Just be aware of the water problem is serious. And I would I leave you with this. Nobody spends forty thousand dollars to put French drains in their basement unless they've got a real serious, not rainwater problem, but groundwater problem. Groundwater. And no remediation is going to change that. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Cassidy, you want to speak? Mr. Cassidy, did you want to speak? He, he did already. I, oh, I thought that was Will. I thought that was Kathy just talking. No, again. that, that was okay. that was. Is there anyone else? Second call? Third call? Call that close. Guys, there's two issues here. First of all, we could vote on this uh, or we could let him withdraw it. And uh, now that he brought this to us, there might be a decision to be made on that 10-foot setback now that, that he wanted before. Now we'll bring it down to one and a half. Maybe it's maybe it's like maybe he should go to the drawing board and build whatever he can by right. To me, it was really upsetting to see this application after everything that that neighborhood went through. And he has a right to do it, but he should have looked at the background and he said he did. But he wanted a two and a half. So I guess he didn't talk to the neighbors because if he did, they, they would have told him right off. No, we didn't even want the one and a half and maybe stop this before it got here. That's just my opinion. So. I know I would like to see is like deny this and let him build something that he can buy right. And that's what he bought. Not doing his homework. That's not my fault. You know, maybe he's got to shrink that house four, six feet, three feet in each side to make it to bring it into bounds. But that's just me. Mr. Cabellas, comments? Well, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a little, obviously I said, told you before, I was a little upset about this in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, if the board wants to let him withdraw, I, I would go along with that. Okay. However, I also understand that he already has the variance mm -hmm. that he could use. Yep. And so, you know, if he if he draws a while prejudice, he's gonna he's gonna talk to the neighbors, I guess, but he's gonna end up with ask for something probably. Yep. And I'm not sure if we should be allowing that either. So I you okay. know I'm I uh, I'm on the fence on this one. But yep. 
I'm leaning towards uh, denying it. Okay. Uh, Charlie? Yeah, I, I, I won't be voting in favor of what's proposed here um, at all. Um, as far as the other issue with letting them withdraw or voting against it, um, it, it doesn't matter to me. I, um, I feel as though if he withdraws it, it's done. He's not going to bring anything back that looks similar to this. Yep. He knew what he was buying. It was a modest yep. home and a modest lot. Right. So, um, and he said he was aware, and he just took a shot, figuring that maybe it would go through, not knowing the history. Um, I, I, again, I'll, I'll make the argument that I'd let him withdraw it if, he, if that was what we felt as though he should do. Okay, Mr. Chin. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, this just um, the whole thing smells from the from the very beginning uh, when yeah. when when the original owner first came right. before us and there were misrepresentations made. The whole thing. Uh, I'm not going to go as far as saying they were fraudulent, but mm -hmm. uh, in hindsight now it certainly looks like there were misrepresentations made. We're living with those. We right. granted uh, that original owner a variance. Uh, now we're dealing with a second owner who wants to expand on the variance. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's right to to waste the time of a lot of people tonight yep. and a lot of good work that was done by the neighbors in terms of providing right. information and background uh, to yes. us Correct. Uh, so that so that we can make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in unquestionably, I would vote no tonight to the proposal that's before the board. Right. And I would strongly consider uh, requiring uh, Adherence to the first variance. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Mr. Hamill. I would vote no, obviously, for this uh, two and a half stories, and I also would vote no to withdraw it. Um, it just it seems to be a, a tremendous waste of time to go and bother the neighbors to try to get them to accept something that they don't want. Mm -hmm. I would say that this should just revert to one and a half story, or yeah. what he could build by right. All right, so we got, I'm here to vote no. Uh, one, anyone else? That's Mr. Hemmel? Yeah, uh, no. I'm, no. I'm, I'm with no also. You're going to vote no? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Can we have a motion just to vote, vote this down, get rid of it? The chairman of Band number 21 53, Hardy and Man Design Group, for a variance finding to construct a two and a half story building on the existing non conforming lot. Which received variances in ZBA case number Z19 40 for a 1.5 story building on the premises number 186 Essex Street. I make a motion to deny the variance. Second. Second. Adam Clark, we have a voice vote. Mike Caveas? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. And Marty Aiken? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Sorry we had to go through that. Further on to tonight's business. DBA 2160, Jacob Drone for a finding to add a second floor in the existing structure and small two-story addition in the back of the house, 89 Billing Street. The applicant and representative here. I'm here, Jacob Drone. Jacob, can you take an oath, please? Yes, sir. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. You have the floor. Um, so I'm um, speaking on behalf of the Gillen family. Um, they are requesting a finding for to add a second story uh, to essentially add additional living space to the current house that's there. That's only 664 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Again, they're, they're going to add the second floor as well as a 14 foot by 12 foot addition in the back, two stories as well. Um, their parents uh, also live with them currently. Um, they have a finished basement. And, um, you know, with everything that's happened with COVID and the age of their parents, they want to keep the whole family together. And so they are asking um, for this finding to be able to expand the current house and all stay together. 
All right, uh, and every you're just going up to, to, to same same side, same on the foundation, up a, up a story, and then the back you're putting the bedroom in the, in the bath. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the we're only changing the foot footprint in the back. Correct. Yep. Correct. Yes, and sir. You're trying to bring it out a little bit in the, in the same angle as the home. Correct. Correct. Yep. I have no further questions, Mr. Cabayas. Any questions? I have no questions. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, any questions? I'm good. Mr. Hemmel? No questions. Mr. Chin? No questions. Uh, is there anyone that would like to speak in favor? First call? Second call? Citizen Rotafel has hand. Citizen Rotafel. Is there any correspondence? On, uh, Citizens, you're on the road. John Orderfield, 62 Grand Wall Road. Um, yeah, just from looking at the street, I mean, there's a bigger house on the left, a bigger house on the right. This is just a small house. It's very dense housing up on Billing Street. I think this fits in fine. Just, I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who want to speak in favor? Second call? Third call? All our private hearing close. I have a letter here. The DPW August 9th, 89 Billing Street, case number 2160. We'll be in this middle. Have no comments. Or anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? Second call. I have one question for you. What's the height of that when you're done? Uh, roughly 32 feet. 31.68 feet. All right. All right. Uh, third call. I'll apply the hearing closed. I'll be voting in favor. Mr. Bass? I'll be voting in favor. Mr. O'Brien? Wow, likewise, a nice fit up there. Uh, Mr. Chin? Yes, I'm in favor. Mr. Himmel? Mr. Himmel? He's frozen. He's frozen. Okay, Michael Cabez, can I have a motion, please? Yes. Mr. Chairman, a man number 21 60. Jacob drilling for a finding to add a second floor to the existing structure in a small two story addition on the back of the house on the premises number 89 Billing Street. I make a motion to grant the finding. Second. On the motion, if we could uh, have none, Madam Clerk, we have a voice vote, please. Mike Cavayas? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. John Himmel? John's not here right oh, no. now, but we'll get to him. Okay, and Marty. Yes. So it's four to, four to whatever Mr. Himmel says. So it passes. John, you there? He just, he's logging in again. Thank you. Further on to tonight, Jacob Drawn for advance to construct the second story edition of premise 74 Raycroft Street. You're under oath. Go ahead. You have the floor. Right. Uh, okay, uh, for this one, I'm speaking on behalf of the Grealish family uh, for the property located at 74 Raycroft Street. Um, basically the same idea. Uh, they're a growing family. Uh, they currently have two kids and uh, right. have a third on the way and looking um, to add a second story to their current home. Thank you. Could you please hold right there? Mr. Himmel, we're waiting on your vote. Last vote. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, for this, there is no, for, for 74 Raycraft, there is no change to the uh, footprint at all. Mm -hmm. uh, just going up a second story. Um, and uh, the reason we're seeking the variance is for the floor area ratio. Yep. Um, it is currently 0.4 and it, uh, we're asking that it go up to 0.56. Um, and that's because the basement will also be finished. It is currently finished and will remain finished. Um, so that's what brings up the, uh, the floor area ratio to the 0.56. And uh, as far as the street goes, um, the houses on either side of them are, are also just one, one and a half stories right now. However, there are additional houses on the street that there's plenty of houses on the street that are two and a half stories. Right. On uh, Raycroft. Now I know it's a one-family home right now. Correct. And they're yep. keeping it as a one-family home. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So if they needed something yeah. later, putting all this 
And I just wanted to make sure I didn't want to change it to a two at the same time. Okay. Nope. Close nope. the mic. Parking. So, um, Mr. O'Brien, any questions? Uh, how many bedrooms now and how many bedrooms when you're done? <clears throat> there is uh, two bedrooms now and there'll be four bedrooms when, when they're done. One for them and then one each for their, their three children. I got a plan here that shows there's four bedrooms on the second floor alone. Correct. Um, the yeah, the, their it, the plans weren't updated, but that bedroom on the first floor, yeah, is is it's going to be a completely open floor plan on the first floor. That bedroom will not be there. Okay, and down in the basement, there's no bedrooms. It's just finished. Correct. No bedrooms. No bedrooms. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cabez? Anything? I have no, I have no question. Mr. Chen? I have the same questions as Charlie because the, uh, the plans show a lot of bedrooms. Yeah. Know, different floors. Right. right. And they changed it. There's an open floor plan downstairs on the first floor. Stay changed. Yeah, they had originally that. wanted to keep that as potentially a guest bedroom. Yeah. Um, but We've since they've since decided that we're just gonna open up that whole entire first floor. What would you do with this? It's, gonna, it's gonna be wide open, so there is not gonna be a room there, correct? Correct. Yep. Correct. So that room okay. is gone. All right. All right, I have no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Himmel. Say so, that was my same question. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Anytime, John. No bedrooms in the basement, no bedrooms on the first floor, four in the second floor. Correct. Uh is there anyone that wants to speak in favor? First call. Second call. Anybody? No hand. All that closed. Any correspondence? None. I just have another letter here. 74 Raycroft, uh, GBA 2161. We reviewed the above reference middle and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? First call. Second call. Anyone? Not no good. hands. All right. Third call closed. Uh, I'll be voting in favor. Mr. Be voting in favor. Likewise. Mr. Chin? I'm in favor. And Mr. Himmel? In favor. We have a motion, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Amendment number 21 61. Jacob Drohan for a Variants to construct the second story addition on the premises number 74 Great Cross Street. I make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion, seeing none, Madam Clerk, can we have a voice vote, please? Mike Cabeas? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Uh, yes. John Himmel? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Marty Aiken? Yes. Brethren, on the tonight. ZBA 2163, Gentlemen. Frederick Lupa, Sun Power. Well, hold on one minute. I want to see if these other people are back here before we get into the project. Uh, it was 2142, 70 Carlisle Street, correct? Is there anyone yep. here? The 70 Carlisle Street? Nice little project they're putting in the back there. It's simple, too. Okay, I guess not. I guess we're in the end and we'll give them one more call. CBA 2163, Frederick Lupa Sun Power Corporation for special permit, special permit floodplain to install solar photovoltaic carport system with the parking lot compromised approximately, price of approximately 7,460 panels mounted atop four individual parking canopies number 17. 1776 Heritage Drive is the applicant or representative here? Yes. Are you, a, are you a lawyer? No, I'm not. Uh, could you take an oath, please? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth will help you, God? I do. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, this is Frederick Looper. I live at 53 Mount Vernon Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Right, Zero Fred, eight, I just got four. a couple questions. There's a couple. Uh, you said it was local 130. You meant local 103 was doing that work? Correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, it was in five, 3.2 kilowatts. It was 3.2 megawatts from states. Is that correct? 3.27 megawatts DC. It's right. slightly less AC. 
Yeah, I know exactly. Okay, you have the floor. I actually, uh, uh, this is just a quick introduction. I'm Fred Luper, I'm the project manager for the project at Sunfire. I have my colleagues, uh, my civil engineering consultants here, uh, Robert Bukowski and Megan McAllister. Um, they can answer the board's questions on the specific uh, zoning and other permitting questions. Mm -hmm. Who's Hi, everyone. Right now? Uh, Bob? Rob Bukowski with Weston Samson. I'm, I'm also not a lawyer. All right. Could you take an oath, please? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not the but the truth to help you, God. I do. Thank you. Okay, hey, so uh, thank you, everyone. So we're here tonight about uh, proposed three proposed um, solar PV carport structures at the uh, parking lot of the State Street Bank facility. Um, it is located in the Business C Central Business District, um, and this will be an accessory use, meaning all the power will be used by the facility. Um, so because it's an accessory use in this district, we're requesting uh, special permit approval. And in addition, it's also in the floodplain over overlay district. Um, requiring special permit approval as well. We did go in front of the Conservation Commission two weeks ago um, for a request for determination of applicability because some of the foundation locations are, are inside the floodplain mm -hmm. and they did give us a negative determination. Um, everything proposed here is going to be within the parking area. The foundation locations are there. There'll be some trenching, um, mm -hmm. but it's basically you know existing developed area that the, the project is proposed in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I looked at the drawings. Uh, uh, I like what I saw, and I, and I I really wish like Stop and Shop and all these places would do the same thing. I mean, it's talk about a waste. Sun, 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 doing nothing. Even in the winter, half take half the three quarters of the snow off here and everything else. Get into your car and everything else. I I think what you're building here is really something that should be done by a lot of companies. I hope people are paying attention to what you're doing here. I don't have any questions on it because I read the drawings. I looked at your plans. I'm an electrician myself. This is what I do. I was the one that made all the laws in this state, for you guys to install all this stuff with uh, the senators of this state. Uh, Mr. Caveus, any questions? I, I don't. I don't. I mean, how high off the ground is this going to be? I do have a question. How high off the ground is these, uh, these structures going to be? Uh, Fred, do you want to take that? I think it's between 13 and 16 feet. Is that right? Uh, I have it actually uh, pulled up. Uh, the minimum clearance underneath the drive aisles will be, of course, 13 and 6. Yeah. And then the maximum height that we're looking at, I have it pulled up. Just one moment. Um, maximum height is 18 feet 9 inches at array 4. Um, and then the rest of the heights, of course, follow the average grade, so they will be less. Thank you. Miss That's bigger than the stereotype bridges, I think. <laughs> definitely, you can you can definitely drive a U-Haul underneath this. <laughs> um, how how deep you go with your uh, uh, with your excavation? Uh, current design has nine foot deep foundations for most of the site, uh, nine foot caps of the drilling. There will be a driven pile that will go further down to refusal. Um, there are deeper foundations uh, in the site uh, to protect some underground utilities that go down to 19 feet. Um, but those are, I believe, one quarter of the foundations that have that. That's the excavated uh, foundation. Okay. The, the reason I'm asking is because the, the history in that area over there that that land over there sinks and floats and swims and that and Newport Ave over there has been a disaster. Um, that's can you you can you assure us that that won't happen in the parking lot that with your excavation and your and your piles and stuff that there won't be any like giveaway yes. and it'll stop sinking. So we did a um, uh, significant geotechnical investigation out on site. Um, probably I think starting maybe last winter um, okay. we did we did a number of boreholes that went down as deep as I think 40 50 or 60 oh, wow. feet so um, you know that's a key part in the foundations for these structures is evaluating the soil and making right. sure that the foundation design is appropriate for the on-site conditions okay what kind of weight how much of these things weigh if that's an answer that the board wishes it's it's a question I'll have to ask my structural engineers um, I know that my it's steel roughly, I mean, is the oh steel God. for the columns and the cross beams is 276 tons spread across all four arrays. Um, there's other components as well, um, but 
that's a that's a very detailed structural uh, question. Five minutes. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Two questions: Will the um, will the panels be louvered so that they'll be rotating in relation to the sun, or will they be stationary? They will be stationary. They're a fixed tilt in two different directions at this time. Uh, our way of design. And uh, will there be any um, plans for electrical vehicle charging stations located in that area? Not at this time, no. The client has not requested that. Come on, guys. Uh, get with the uh, program. Come on. Come on. I got to sell, I gotta sell on. you right first. Hey, sir. There's, money, there's money. We're all paying for this charging stations, all of us. So come on. Get some money from the grid. Let's go. Hey, so this is Mike LaRosa. I'm with the, uh, land, the um, State Street. Uh, yeah. There are charging stations we just installed in uh, in that site. Uh, we have 18 charging stations. See, where'd you get the money, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, most part of it from National Grid, but most of it came from State Street. No, I know that. I know that. But they they pay for the electricity and the other end. That's where we put that money into that fund slot. Uh, Mr. Himmel, any questions? Oh, I think it's a great idea. There's one down here in Falmouth in a relatively small marketplace that's worked out well. Mm -hmm. with south-facing canopies and uh, mm -hmm. there's no problem with them that's yeah. a good job for local 103 too so yeah it's a nice job yeah these guys will like it thank you uh is there anyone that wants to speak in favor first call second call citizen rotafel citizen rotafel you're under oath john Thank you. I just want to say um, I think this is great. I'm in favor of green energy. We could use more of this, like you said. Yeah. And um, my question, I did have one question about the project. Is the panels going to be connected to a power wall where you'll be saving the energy or not? If you're referring to the Tesla product power wall, a battery system, currently not this time, no. Okay, okay. Who's not um, but that's it, but I, I'm in favor of this, and um, good luck with your project. Thank you, John. Anyone else want to speak in favor? Second call. Third call. Call up Paula. Uh, I have we'll call up Paula Hearing. I have a letter here from DPW, 1776 Heritage Drive, GBA 2163. We reviewed this middle of the above reference project. And have no comments, but there will be many later for you guys. Uh, anyone opposed or undecided? First call. Second call. Anything up, John? No hands. All right, third call. Call up on the hearing close. I'll be voting in favor. One of you, John. I'll be voting in favor, Mr. Chairman. Mr. O'Brien. Nice work. I'll be in favor. Chin. Uh, one last question, if yep. I may, sure. Mr. Chairman. Uh, in terms of glare, are there any studies on glare to abutters or anything like that uh, coming no, off no. of the structure? It's too short of a, 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 a of a ray as it's tipping, so it, it it's not gonna no, not down in the back, back down there. I mean, if you're in the middle of middle of high rise, yeah, depends where you got the windows in your buildings, but no. And we we did do a glare study, um, and submitted that through FAA, and we just got uh, notification yesterday, I believe, that uh, there was no effect. Thank you. I'm in favor. Mr. Himmel? I'm in favor. Uh, one quick question. Hey, Frederick, is this uh, this is direct use, correct? Yeah, at this time, the array has actually a non-export system uh, designed. However, even without that non-export system, the building load is actually more than what the array will right. produce in here at this time. Great. Thank you. As fast as I'm it's made, it sucks it right up. There you go. Uh, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, amendment number 21-63, Frederick Luper, Sun Power yeah. Corporation for a special permit, special permit flood plan to install solar flood port system within the parking lot. The price was approximately 7,460 uh, panel modules mounted atop four individually parking canopies. The premises number 1776 Heritage Drive and make a motion to grant the special permits. Second. Uh, on the motion, seeing none, Madam Clerk, can I have a voice vote, please? Michael Cabrillas? Yes. Kelly O'Brien? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Marty Aiken? Yes, yes, yes. 
<laughs> Thank you. Boy. Thank you, guys. Uh, last call. 70 Carlisle Street. Is there anyone here? I think someone forgot to log on. Madam Clerk, if you could write them a letter, please, and ask them to get in touch with you. Uh, do you want to move this to, for a month? Uh, and, they, and we can call, call them something happened. Something could have happened to them. Is that fair enough? What do you think, guys? Yep. Yeah, right. I agree. Sally, can I move it and make a motion for a month? What's the meeting in uh, September 20, what? 28. So, uh, 28th? The meeting is 14th and the 28th. Yeah, 28th. Oh, there you go. Mr. Chairman, the matter number 31-42. I'm not going to try to say the name either. For a special permit, one point variance finding to construct a one story addition and roof deck on the premises of a 70 Carl Isle Street and make a motion to be in here September 28th. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn. And yeah, second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. See you later, guys. Okay. Okay.